to just stay up here for a minute. How many believe that the Lord really could be reigning on us? I think that's scriptural. Oh, yeah. I think, mean, you know what? It's not only scriptural. We can see it already. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we reverence you, Lord. We thank you for your presence. We, thank, we thank you, Lord. We honor you for the salvation so far this weekend. People getting baptized in the Spirit this week. We thank you for the Lord. He's pouring out upon his people, the people that are being re renewed in their faith. Lord, we thank you. We've been seeing some of that. Hallelujah. And it's just beginning. It's just beginning. How many believe this room? It's just beginning. Hallelujah. My brother, man, he's getting all fired up. Now his daughter is getting saved because God's... Isn't that just amazing? Hallelujah. My father got saved. I'm just ready for the river to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. I'm not telling you, I'm ready. You ready, Lita? More than. More than. <laughs> More than. Anybody ready? Is it time to enter into the river? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Amen. Wow, that's time. I'm telling you. And I'm thinking we're going to enter into some stuff today. More of Jesus, more of the Holy Spirit. And uh, I'm ready for that. And, uh, you know, I've been living what I've been talking about. The Lord has put another message on my heart this week. And he told me to call it Tabernacling with God. Tabernacling with God. And uh, it's time to enter in. Hear that word, it's time. How many can just say with me, it's time. It's time. It's time. All right, praise the Lord. I want to begin with a promise from God's Word. Uh, turn with me to Romans uh, 15, 13. Romans 15, 13. Lord, we thank you for your grace here. Can anybody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord, for your angels, your ministering spirits, your blood covering us. We thank you for the grace here. I pray, Lord, it would just impact people even not even here just listening today as well. Hallelujah. It says, now the God of hope fill you. How many want to be filled Amen. with all joy and peace in believing Amen. that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost? Alright, that's what we're talking about. Tabernacling like the first church did. Tabernacling like the, the people of the old covenant. People like Caleb. People like Joshua, how many want to tabernacle with God? Amen. And so this week we, we started talking about uh, how Joshua, how he, um, you know, the nation of Israel and, and Joshua. Remember that story, anybody? How they crossed the Jordan River. Oh man, that took some power there, right? How they took the city of Jericho, and how did they do it? They did it uh, by meditating on. On the commandments of the Lord. That's what the word of the Lord was to Joshua. You can see that Joshua 1.8. And, uh, and so what happened when those waters parted? What happened when those walls came down? Anybody got some walls that need to come down? Amen. So you can enter in to your promised land, the kingdom? Oh man. Is that they were tapping into this power that comes. You know, it's a secret hiding place of this power that comes, you know, to those who believe. Yeah. All right, it's those who keep the word, keep the commandments of the Lord. And here's a revelation that we started building on last week. The secret hiding place of his power that's mentioned in Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 4. Anybody ever think about that one? It says there's horns that come out of the hand, the right hand of God. Symbol for power, it's light horns. Therein is a hiding place of his power. Well, that power is, is revealed uh, over in Deuteronomy 33.2, before Moses left this world, he blessed the people, and it says a, a fiery law went out for the people. That is a reference. That's where that power is contained. That's what made the way for the people to go into their promised land through the through the desert, through the wilderness, through those circumstances. 
Anybody want to go with some of that? And so we're not trying to work you up after the after the flesh here. I'm telling you, this is this is a reality in a very real way. You can tap into this. The good news is, is under the new covenant, Jesus has made a way for you to not only to, to walk in what they had, as good as that was in the old covenant, but now he, he made a way for you to walk and to follow after him uh, in the new covenant by, by this new law, by the new covenant. John uh, 13, 34, he says, A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another, even as I love you. How many want to just... You know, how many believe you, you, you're going to need some power to love like yeah, Jesus did? Amen. Maybe to love your wife. Yeah. Or your husband. Or, yeah, well, yeah, so the last on that one. Okay, that's the last so Or, or maybe, uh, maybe your neighbor. You know, anybody got some neighbors that are hard to love? Or maybe your naughty children. Or your naughty children, yeah. Or maybe an enemy. You know, we're called to love everyone now. I mean, this is a big deal, and it's going to take power. Everybody think that we need the power to, to lay hands on the sick and see them healed or see people set free. Isn't that included in loving one another as Jesus loved us to reach out? And then, I mean, what's it going to take for you to break free from where you are to where you, you're starting to witness for God, spreading the gospel of the kingdom? You know, we, it's going to take this power, and I'm telling you, it's in the new covenant. It's in the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. You see that in Romans chapter 8. And so in Joshua's case, over in the Old Covenant, it was when he, when he meditated. Joshua 1.8, the Lord says, Hey, I want you to meditate on my commandments. Don't let them depart from your mouth. In other words, to keep speaking, keep visualizing, keep speaking, keep visualizing, keep believing, keep looking with expectation, with desire. Keep uh, having a reverence for what he says about everything else so that you will be prosperous everywhere you go. Empowered to go. Yeah. And so, how many think that they were they were uh, tapping in, you know, when those when those those waters in, in the Jordan parted like the Red Sea, that there was something going on because they were tapping in, that there might have been some walls coming down because they were obedient to the leading of the Lord. And so that enacted or ignited uh, their, their, uh, their authority. It brought the power of God into their circumstances, right? Yeah. I'm going to need the power of God to come in your circumstances. Yes, right. Oh, man. And so this is what we're talking about. <clears throat> tabernacle. What were these people doing? They were tabernacling with God. How many want a tabernacle like that? Amen. Like Jesus, right? And can we do it? Oh yeah, we can do it. And we're going to do it. Praise the Lord. And so here we are. We are in this season called the Feast of Tabernacles. Some of you, how many don't really know that much about the Feast of Tabernacles? Can I have a show of hands? And, oh yeah, so there's, see, there's more than half the place is not real familiar with this. And Hey, I'm looking in the mirror, and God, he's, he's doing a work in my life, too, concerning this. And um, But let me just, I'm going to touch on a little bit today, because God is up to something. And um, so right now, people around the world, Jewish people, and many church groups are celebrating this Feast of Tabernacles. Some of them are building little booths called sukkahs, you know, and they're having parties. How many like to have parties? In the Holy Spirit, you know, parties, you know, good. I mean, this is good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got to qualify that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, not, we have, not like we used to. It's a new way to party. Okay. In the Holy Spirit, yeah. And so what they're doing is they're looking forward to the return of the king. I mean, how many believe that's a good thing to do? Yeah. How many think that we might need to do that as well? Yeah. Well, you know, there's some revelation in this message here that might open your eyes to the importance that we do. And I pray that grace comes out. And so as good as all that is, as, as all that sounds, how many believe that it might even be better to not talk about and celebrate about it, but actually step in and actually tabernacle with God Amen. in a greater way maybe than last season even? Amen. 
how many has room for improvement for Amen. growth? Amen. Oh, yeah. And so, man, that's what we're talking about today. He wants to awaken us to the potential that is here, that's available for all his children. Hallelujah. And so he wants you to be a living tabernacle. That, that's what, that would bring Jesus the reward for what he did on the cross. How many believe that? To love one another as he has loved you. All right. And, uh, and so this message today is just not a message. This is, a, this is connected to a, a series of messages that this, this, this house has been open to. Lead has been helping building up different um, uh, services and groups of people and Mary Ellen. And, and uh, the Lord has been building us into this to, the, to get us to this place where we hear our, we're right now, we're in this time. Uh, of tabernacles where we can actually start the tabernacle in a real tangible way. Wow. Hallelujah. And so, how many are ready to enter into more of this? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so well, you're in the right place. Then. All right, praise the Lord. Yeah. These are appointments. They are appointments. Yeah, we're gonna. This is God's a appointment with you to speak to you to wow. give you empowerment for the next season. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah. People have been praying. They've been fasting. They're looking to God. And I'm going to encourage you to do the same. Even today, right here, He can touch you. And so just prior to entering into the season, the Lord's been dealing with me about this as a, as a, a new covenant minister, a, you know, a Gentile group here primarily. And, you know, and a lot of people, I think they, they, they take certain things in this Bible and they really go after it. But there's other areas that are kind of just kind of just dance around. Right. And I'm telling you, I don't I'm, the Lord's getting my attention about this. This is not an area we can dance around. Right. There's not any area here that we should take lightly right. to not be right. truthful. The whole book. How many just say the whole, whole book? Word. The, the whole word, yeah. Whole and so just prior to this season, trumpets, atonement, uh, tabernacles, he gave me a vision. I saw an open vision. Uh, right after we had an outpouring in Stockton, I saw this cloud, and I saw it over Modesto, actually. That's what he showed me. Waters forming. Yeah. Oh, I mean, this cool blue yeah. waters forming in this cloud, and we just had an outpouring, and so he's getting us ready. How many believe he's getting us ready? Then he gave me a word, and I've been speaking this word everywhere I can, on every internet uh, thing since then, and I believe there's been some grace through the decree of what God has put on my heart to make a way for me and those who, who want to go to step into more of these waters. Okay, and so here's a word. Um, let me just give you that word again. Anybody remember that word? That, you know, that we are in a season of outpouring. I believe there's a reason why. I'm going to get to that in a minute. You know, where the outpouring the Lord is desiring to pour upon his church corporately Okay, he's raining salvation upon us, healing, uh, you know, renewal. That's one of the notable things. Renewal is coming upon people. Right, brother, I've seen people last night. These people, they have, they've been away from the Lord. They heard this message, and there was some grace, and it broke. It broke something, and they are fired up for the Lord, rededicated their life to the Lord. And so we're seeing a, a renewal thing happening because of these, these, this outpouring. How many think that that's a good thing? Yeah. I'm looking in the mirror. There's some more things in my life that need to be renewed. Mm -hmm. There's a hinder, you know, there's things that are hindering me from moving forward, and I gotta get, I gotta break it. I gotta break free from the past to move forward. Amen. Amen. And so uh, this is raining right now, and there's heavier rains that are coming. That was the word he gave me, which is going to draw more and more hungry and thirsty people into the deeper waters. Hallelujah. Anybody want some deeper waters uh, God. that contain real bread? Thank you, Lord. I mean, people are dying in places today because there's no life. And, and I mean, he wants real bread, real juice, right? Joy, the Holy Spirit, you know. And uh, isn't that what it says? Wine in there in the scriptures in Isaiah 55. Yeah. And more seed to sow to make a way for you to go. 
And I really believe that there is a river that's starting to form. Just, let's just decree it right now. Tell your neighbor there's a river that's starting to form right now. Breaking through. How they're being in you, right? Oh, yeah. In us. I think people are ready for this message today. And so, as I mentioned earlier, there are Christian groups celebrating this this old covenant yeah. festival around the world, and and the and why? I think part of the reason is because Jesus celebrated right. this gift, this 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 this, this festival. I mean, imagine that. He was a bread. You know, he was a, he was a living tabernacle. The Word made flesh that dwelt among us, tabernacled among us, and he celebrated this this festival. How many think that we might ought to at least kind of look into it and find out about it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you can see this. This is in John 7, 10. And then down in verse 37, it says that in the last day, that great day of the feast, the Feast of Tabernacles, okay, he stood and he cried, saying, I mean, believe that when he said that, I mean, there was some force, there was some, some power coming out of it. He said that there's enough grace in what he said on that day to hit you. Right here, in 2,000 years later. How many believe that, that when he spoke, it can hit you? He says, if any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. He that believes on me, according as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Oh yeah, these waters are real. Anybody experience some of these rivers, these waters? We're going to build on that later on. And, and, and I just want to just, just kind of build on this a little bit. It was interesting to me to, to realize that the prophet, the old covenant prophet, Zechariah, he said something. He said that in the Messianic era, that the Feast of Tabernacles was going to be a universal festival. Meaning that year to year, people, you know, in the years to come, in eternity, were going to make annual trips, people of every nation, to worship the king and to celebrate this feast. How many think that that might be a good idea to get it, get ready for it now? Yes. Yeah. And let me just show you this by the word. And, and this is a big deal. Zechariah 14, 16. Zechariah 14, 16, if you're following with your Bible, it says, and it shall come to pass. How many believe that's a, that's a sure word? That everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem, oh man, shall even go up from year to year, so there it is, to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Yep. Oh. You ever hear that one preached? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never really heard much of that one preached, you know. And, and I believe the Lord wants this word to get out. And hear what it says in verse 17. And it shall be that whoso will not come up to come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Wow. That was, you think there's a connection with, with these outpourings and us getting excited about, about what these festivals are talking about, what they're pointing to, realizing that these things are still, have yet to be fulfilled, completely fulfilled? Yeah, could be, right? Oh man, I think there's more to it than you may realize. Right there, it points it out right there. And so I tell you, when I, when I got that verse, I got that verse, I said, I'm putting that in my message. I got up, I went to get a cup of coffee, and then all of a sudden I could hear outside the window this noise. Guess what it was? Water. It was rain, man. It was rain. <laughs> Lord, I got a Holy Spirit witness that, that, hey, you know what? We're on the right path, and that more rains are coming. Just say, more rains more are coming. Rain. 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 More life, hallelujah. And so, you know, back looking back at that 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 revelation that you know John seven thirty seven, 
that river is formed within those who believe. As the scripture has said, as you believe, according to the word, there's a river that's formed within you. And it's brought forth. It's made manifest out of your innermost being, your belly, through your mouth, through prayer, through your life. How many agree with me that, that hey, it, it's time to, we need some more prayer? Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, this is a big deal. This call to prayer. He's calling this house to prayer. Yes. Yeah, we need more prayer meetings. And, brother, we got to talk. we got we got to get one going here. And uh, we, I need some people to pray, you know. And so we've been endeavoring all week long to talk about prayer, kingdom prayer this week, praying like Jesus prayed. How many want to pray like he did? Yeah. I was calling it kingdom praying. King, you know, praying with power. He says, thy will be done, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, right? Wow. Yeah. And so when he prayed, the glory, the power of God was displayed through him. He set it up for you to pray in the same manner. He says, when you pray, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them. You know, you shall have whatever you say if you doubt not in your heart. There is a, there is a way to pray and, uh, and Jesus demonstrated that way to pray. And we can pray with power. And when we start tapping in, oh man, it's going to be a big shift. How many believe people are going to get ignited? They're going to be like Caleb and say, you know, maybe some people don't want to go into the promised land, but know what? You know, even though those millions of people didn't want to go in, he knew. He got a hold of this. Caleb and Joshua, I mean, they went in, didn't they? Wow, who's ready to go in? Yeah, man, I'm ready to enter in. And, uh, wow. And so that's what we've been talking about. The Lord said earlier this week, he said, I want you to, to uh, send out a message to everybody to start praying for your family, pray for circumstances, pray for those needs that the Lord puts on your heart. You know, and I want you to know we've been endeavoring to pray for all of you as well, as much as we possibly can. And how many believe that that, that that's just something can happen? There's been, realize that if you don't pray, uh, people may not have their breakthrough. That we are here to help one another. It says in Galatians 6, 2, that we're to bear one another's burdens so, so we can fulfill the law of Christ. How many want to pray for somebody so the burden can be lifted off. Yep. Oh yeah, if you don't pray, maybe nobody else will, right? And he's calling us to prayer. We've been given the ability to, I mean, supernatural ability to pray with the kingdom. Hallelujah. All week long, we've been seeing miracles happening, incredible circumstances. It looked like people's lives were being destroyed. I can give you several uh, testimonies right now. Uh, how when people were praying, there's been a miracles happen. We've seen marriages restored this week, breakthroughs, reputations, and just just crazy things coming against people, but it's all breaking because people are praying. I came, I mean, I knew people were praying for, for us this week, so I came with an expectation, and we've already seen salvations. We've seen healing. Man, we saw this lady get healed this morning. We've seen her need to... The Lord is touching people because of prayer. How many believe that? Don, you came and you got us all fired up, you and all Tim. And last night in Stockton, they came and they crashed our Stockton healing service. Yay. Yeah. yeah, Gina. Wow. I like that, man. Let's crash some more services. Yeah. Yeah, yeah crash the party, right? And they said, yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, bring some breakthrough, right? We need some more breakthrough. And so, praise the Lord. We also started asking Genevieve and I that you would pray for us as well. And it's scriptural to do that. Colossians chapter 3, verses, Colossians chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. Uh, Paul was saying, hey, please pray for us. With all praying also for us that God would open unto us the door of utterance. How many believe that it's important that you can literally make a way for people to speak, uh, to make the mystery of Christ, you know, manifest, to bring it out, to speak as we ought to speak is what it says there. How many want the preachers to, 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 to preach the way they ought to preach? 
Amen. But not water anything down or sugarcoat something, right? To please the people, but to please God. Amen. And to please yes. God by speaking the truth to one another in love, right? Amen. Oh, yeah. And so that's what he's calling us to do. Amen. And it works both ways, so please pray for me. Pray for me in Chico, too, in Paradise. There would be more breakthrough up there. Hallelujah. So very quickly, several people weren't here during the week. Kingdom praying. Kingdom praying is a mutual agreement. It's covenant. A covenant. I mean, how many realize we have a covenant between God and man? It's the alignment of the kingdom of heaven and you, your spirit, your soul, your, your whole being, okay? And when this happens, your God-given authority becomes ignited, infused with this power, so God's power and glory is displayed through your life. I mean, like that. What happens when that happens? Watch out devil, right? Watch out circumstances, right? Why? Because the kingdom of God is coming upon them. Isn't that what Jesus said? Yeah. Hallelujah. How many ready for the kingdom of God to be that vessel through which God can impact the world with his kingdom? Amen. Oh, yeah. Prayer. Hallelujah. And so I'm ready. Hallelujah. And so turn to 1 John chapter 2. And this really sums it up. The, the apostle... 1 John chapter 2 really brings out uh, a lot of meat here, a lot of revelation on what it means to tabernacle, what keeps us from tabernacling the way we should be, and there's exhortation in here to get you back in the right place. And then we'll, we'll build on a few keys and then we'll, and we'll close. Um, 1 John chapter 2, I'm going I'm to read some, a good chunk of, of scriptures here, uh, very fast, uh, verse 1. And this is the Lord speaking, and speaking to us, too, here in this day. My little children, these things I write unto you. So personalize this, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Hallelujah. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Anybody say amen on that one? Amen. 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 That's the one. Yeah, the whole world. And please hear this. And hereby we do know that we know him, that we're tabernacling with him, if we keep his commandments. Okay? He that says, verse 4, I know him and keep not his commandments is a liar. Yep. The truth is not in him. And I'm, you know what? And this is a big deal. Uh, there's people just sitting in a lot of places. They think everything's all right, but they're not in the truth. They're not living in the truth because they're not keeping their, there's no fruit. They're, they're, they're not going to, I'll just be quiet there, but you, you get my point, right? Yeah, but God's trying to awaken us. How many believe it's time to enter in? Thank you. Amen. Yeah, it's time. But whoso keeps the word in him verily, is the love of God perfected. That's what we've been talking about. Hereby we know that we are in the end. How many want us to see the will of God perfected in your life? Just pray, God, expand my heart like David did so that I can go and obey your commandments. Hallelujah. Listen especially to the next verse. He that, us, he that says he abides in him, that word in him is a reference to the Holy Spirit Okay, ought himself also to walk even as he walked. That's our Lord. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is reflecting the life of Christ, the love of Christ, the commandment. You know, it's, it's his life, it's his faith, right? And so we ought to be walking the same way, or at least attempting to, and letting the Spirit take us from where we are to take us into this place. Who wants to be on that, on that narrow path? And so, that, wow, that's, a, that's an eye-opener right there. So I want to encourage you, and not discourage anybody. This is not to bring condemnation on anybody, but this is to bring out maybe some things that, that are hindering us from tabernacling with God. Because I'm telling you, please hear me, if there was ever a time to tabernacle with God, how many believe now is the now. time? 
Oh man, yeah, hallelujah. Brethren, hear this. I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which you had from the beginning. From the beginning of your conversion. Listen to that, okay? The old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. There's a revelation there. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, and now the true light shines. Just say the light is shining in me. The light is shining in me. me. He that says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness even unto now. Oh man, that's a word. He that loves his brother abides in the light. Okay? There's a connection. And there is none occasion of stumbling in him. Anybody stumbling a little bit? Uh, wow. Okay? But he that hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and knows not whither he goes because that darkness has blinded his eyes. Wow. I'm telling you, if you will hang on to that word you first heard, it will keep you, it will empower you to keep continuing on in Christ and just stay in that realm. Sticks and stones. Anybody used to sing that when you were a kid? Yeah. It's very common. Yeah, so, yeah. Words, ah. they never, will never hurt me. Take those words back now. Oh, man, take those words back. Yeah. Ah, words are killing people. Yeah. Ah, yeah. And especially the words coming out of so many people's mouths are killing them. Yeah. It's literally right. bringing a, a veil of darkness that blinds you, that keeps you from walking in the light, keeping you from tabernacling. If you're talking about people behind their back instead of praying for them, guess what? You're, you're, you're exposing yourself to the darkness. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've been seeing people just, I mean, I can, wow, well, I've got to be careful. Yeah. Words <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This Words is a big deal. Created. Words are created. We Amen. create our own environment. Yeah. Life or death. It's in the power of the tongue. Yeah. And so literally, we are created to build, to strengthen, to help God knit one another together in love, in a bond of love, not to tear each other down by pointing out our faults. I mean, when you see something in your wife, don't bring her down. Don't criticize her. Don't point it out. She knows it already. You know, pray. Or, 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 or vice versa, right? Or your neighbor or somebody that's messing up. I'm telling you, you'll do more good for the body of Christ if you'll do that. How many believe that? And on that, I'm going to make a way for you to continue in this tabernacle lifestyle. How many want to continue in that? You won't stumble, it says here. So there's just one key right there. There's several I'm going to touch on today. Wow. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. How many wanted to say, I've overcome the wicked one? Amen. Even my old nature, right? Yeah. Wow. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you. Is this tying in with tabernacling, you think? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you have overcome the wicked one. I like that. Don't you like that one? Anybody want to just overcome? Yes. I'm telling you, all you got to do is start tabernacling with God. You're going to overcome. Because when you're in him, he's like a shield. Wow. Love not the world. This is another prescription here. Neither the things of the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Oh, man. Does that mean we, we got to be careful how we walk, you know, what we put before God? Yeah. If we get too busy for God in our businesses? Yeah. Or soap operas? Or, or maybe football games? Can I dare say that? Football games? Say it. Amen. Oh, okay. oh man. Raiders is as good as we like the Raiders or, or 49ers. <laughs> or God. Yeah, you got to watch out. you got to be careful. If, you know, not to say we can't enjoy these things. 
But who would we put first? And if we're not putting things first, I mean, I, I mean, are we exposing ourselves for the enemy to make inroads into our life? And could it hinder you from tabernacling? Yeah. Oh man, well we'll see here in just a minute by the word. Wow. And wow, it says, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that does the will of God abides forever. Wow. That's a pretty cool promise there. Yes, yes. Little children, hear this. It is the last time, and you have heard that Antichrist shall come even now. There are many Antichrists whereby we know it is the last time. They went out from us. That's in the happening of the church. It's still going on today. But they uh, were not of us. For if they had been with us, they would have no doubt continued with us, but went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But you have an unction of the Holy One, and you know all things. Amen. How many? How many know what I'm talking about? Yeah. How many want to function in that unction? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm telling you, that's a that's a big deal. Can you really do that? Yeah. Promptings yeah. of the Spirit to move, to move, to pray, to do this or that. Oh yeah, that's part of it. Part of tabernacle functioning in the unction. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. So he's, written, he's writing to church people. He's exhorting them so that they don't break you know, away from this tabernacle lifestyle. How many believe it's time for some of us? I don't know who. I'm just raising my hand to enter into more of this tabernacle lifestyle. Yeah. All of us. Oh, wow. Whosoever denies his son. The same has not the Father. But he that acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you, which you have heard from the beginning. And hear that, that's your talking about our, our, our salvation in the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you shall also continue in the Son. Anybody know what I mean when how it was when you got born again? How it was just so easy to love the Lord, to pray, and to, oh man. It says if you continue in that, you, you're going to be able to continue in the sun. Wow. That could be an eye-opener. I'm telling you, I lived through all this stuff that I'm talking about, too. And, uh, and this is a promise. He's promised us even eternal life. Wow. Hallelujah. But the anointing which you have received of him, verse 27, abides in you. Tabernacles, and you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing. It's the same anointing. Teaches you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie. Even as it taught you, you shall abide in him. And I, I just can't stress that enough. We are so dependent upon the Holy Spirit. And he can take you in. If you don't fill him, you don't have that unction yet, don't worry. Just get in love with the word. Okay, the Lord will bring you into it. He's, he can move beyond your lack of, of awareness and, and, and guide you through circumstances, through people. I mean, he is a master of leading you and guiding you. Even if you don't fill him, you don't see him, just believe him, love him, okay? And just try to do the best you can. He'll see your heart and he'll take you from where you are into the place where I want you to be. How many believe that? And now, little children, verse 28, abide in him that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. And so this is what we're talking about this season. We're getting ready so when he comes, we're going to be confident and we're not going to be ashamed. How many want to be ready for that? Yeah. Oh, okay. And so I've hit a few little things here. Everybody doing okay today? Yeah. I haven't made you mad or anything at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is just the word, you know. Yeah, so the, if something cuts you to say, hey, the Lord, just conform me to the word. Yeah. And the Lord has put a couple other things on my heart because I know that people are going for it and, and some people don't understand. Maybe there's reasons why we're having such a difficulty tabernacling 
entering in. Is that okay if we touch on a few keys here today in closing as we wind down? And so I know people in here are fired up and some of the other, all the groups, people are getting fired up, they're going for it. Some of them have been going for it. And you know, when you go for faith, sometimes the waiting process can be, you know, a little overwhelming to see the breakthrough. Anybody know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah, but, uh, but uh, you know, those who wait upon the Lord. Get on that one. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. It says in Isaiah 40, right? Yeah. All right. And so the Lord woke me up this week, and he gave me a, a prophecy to proclaim to as many people as I could to the church not to faint. And he gave me a, he gave me a, a, a revelation. He says, hey, I'm, on, I'm in gathering the church right now to labor in the harvest. And he says he's been laying a foundation in many lives. And uh, he says, don't let your flesh get in the way of what he wants to do in your life. Don't grow weary, is what he told me, in well-doing, because you shall reap if you faint not. That's in Galatians 6, 9. So don't faint if you feel like fainting. Anybody feel like you're about ready to faint? I have Just know that he knows when to rain on your life. He's the author and the finisher, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And maybe somebody has already fainted, given up. up. And, you know, that happens. It can happen to the best of us, you know. The enemy just has a way of coming in and just doing a number on you, and you just give up. Anybody know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So there's a few, you know, maybe one or two in here that, that are there that kind of given up. You know, Jesus kind of gives us the key here to reviving and to continue uh, to have the ability not to faint. And this, this, is a, this is over in Luke 18, 1. He just brought me to this verse. Luke 18, 1, our Lord spoke a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. So there's a connection. Okay, praise the Lord. So don't faint. And if you did already, start praying. He'll revive you. Amen. All right? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then he took me into some more things. Is it okay if I hit a couple more things? Amen. Here today. Wow, there's a fire of the Lord on me here. Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, you know, because he wants to get us in the place. And I got two or three more keys here that might hit somebody, I don't know, might help you get back into that place where you're tabernacling as he wants you to. And so he took me over into the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 2. If you have your Bible, flip over there and Let's just read a few verses. We doing okay in time here? Everybody doing okay in time? Just remember, we have to be out of this church early now. Okay, we're going to be. Yeah, we'll get a. We'll get a. We'll be out of here around six. That's okay. That's plenty of time, right? Three thirty to. I am getting kind of long winded here. I'm <laughs> preaching and anointing, but I think there's man. The Lord is bringing. He's bringing some breakthrough. So we're going to make. Okay. We're going to. I'm almost done. Revelation 2 went unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, right? I think this is a word for us right now, maybe for somebody here, somebody watching. These things says he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, the churches, right? Who walks in the midst of the seven golden, golden candlesticks. There's revelation there. I've got to get back into that. That's a fullness of God. I know thy works and thy labor thy patience, how thou canst bear them which are evil, and how thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and found them to be liars. Well, man, I'm telling you, I've been, I've been tested. Man, people will test you, especially if you're a newcomer, an underdog, and you can keep to get out. They'll test you like crazy. But that's all right, right? Is that right? Hallelujah. Refines you, yeah. And has borne and has patience for thy name's sake and has labored and has not fainted. So maybe there's some people in here that has labored, you haven't fainted, but yet there's something that's just not right in your life. Does that ring a bell with anybody, bear witness with you? You just don't. Feel, you know, and it goes on to say, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. That's what we're talking about, hitting on a little bit in 1 John 2. 
Could it be that because we have moved away from our first love, we haven't continued in what we used to do in the beginning of our conversion, that we have uh, lost that, that joy, you know, that life, that expectancy to fellowship with the Lord, to read our Bible? How many used to just get in their Bible but don't read the Bible like you should? Don't raise your hand. Okay, I've got to go. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm just telling you. Uh, could it be that you're, you're feeling like something's not right, you lost your hope and all this stuff? Could it be that you have lost your first love? You moved away from your first love and something else is in that place. The, the prescription for this is repentance. He says repent. Those who repent, those who overcome, he says he's going to grant you to eat from the tree of life in paradise. Hallelujah. How many want some of that? Hallelujah. Thank so, you, Jesus. You know, and so he goes on. Read that later. Go back and study that. I'm telling you, there's a real key that may be the reason why some people <coughs> aren't having joy in the Holy Ghost. This week after Stockton service, we had just an incredible meeting. For over a week now, the Lord's been releasing prophetic grace in the worship, and then people were, we were born in it. Well, you were there, right? What was going on? It was... It was river, fire, yeah. joy. Yeah, they walked in a little late. What was the atmosphere like when you walked in? Well, I said it was like a cloud. It was like a cloud. And I, I almost fell over when I walked in there. Wow. Yeah, this, the presence was yeah. sick because the Lord was moving through prophetic grace was being released. Mm -hmm. Renewal, people were praising. The whole place was just lit up, praising the Lord. Yeah. Man, we're starting to catch it here, too. And so afterwards, I was all lit up already. And uh, I was, I'm telling you. I still am for that one. And my wife and I, we went and hang, we got a hamburger. Fast food. I mean, like fast food. Oh, man. And we ended up, we ate so fast, we had too much time on our hands. And she goes, let's go to yesterday's books. And I said, okay. <laughs> Anybody know how I am when I get around a bookstore, especially Christian books, watch out. I'm like, a, I'm like a kid in a toy store. That's how I am, especially good ones, you know, Bibles. And they have, I like Lester Sumrall, I like Bill Johnson. I like a lot of different ministers out there. And man, I mean, it's I gotta watch myself because I run out of bookshelf space yeah. and walls and, and walls in my room, and it's a, it's a deal here, <laughs> you know. But I try to bless everybody with what I get, any nuggets out of it, <laughs> 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 justify my actions. Here. <laughs> and so here I was going to this bookstore again. Oh man! And I asked the Lord, "Is there anything that you want me to be praying or looking for?" And I got a vision. I said, all right. I got a vision of the Bible store, uh, the Bible section in that bookstore. Oh, man, go in there. That's a pretty cool little bookstore. And I'm telling you, this Bible, I don't know how, but it almost jumped off by itself <laughs> oh, off God. the shelf. It jumped off. <laughs> <laughs> I seen that. It's and like, that and it lit up like a light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I grabbed a hold of that baby. My wife knew it was too late. It was too late. Because <laughs> I had been praying for this Bible. What is it for a few years? This is a this is a Bible with some uh, a, 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 an old time charismatic preacher that I'm fond of has all his personal commentary integrated throughout the scriptures. What is it? And I'll just I'll tell you afterwards. Okay, I'll tell you afterwards. It's a good one. He doesn't want it on the camera. You know we're broadcasting and that's all right. And I just you know he's a he was a man of God. Millions of people came into the kingdom. Worldwide uh, you know. Revival of ministry. Anyways, I saw that and it was it was like a treasure. So some people <laughs> they think if you're talking about a Bible, but to me that's a treasure. Yeah. How many believe that uh, yes. you know we ought to fall in love with the truths that are contained yes. in the Bible? Amen. That they need to be the treasure. Amen. And maybe if we if we got something else that we're treasuring, maybe that's the reason why you're not tabernacling that you put something else before God. Mm, what are your desires? Maybe it's, I already hit on football, right? You hit on all. I hit it on all. You know, Jesus says where your treasure is, there your heart will be also in Matthew uh, chapter 6. I think that's where that is. Yeah. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth. And when 
when you do, what happens is the implication is that moths and rust corrupt sin. Thieves break in. They break into you when you're putting other treasures. You're exposing yourself to the enemy to come in and break in you. And, and, and oh man, that's kind of not a good thought. But when you're hit, go read this later. It starts around verse 19. But when you put heavenly treasures in you, and you're treasuring, you're living in that, I'm telling you, no devil can get in there. Nothing can corrupt that treasure. Oh, man. Jesus really taught on this. This is a, a spiritual principle here. And so if your treasure is something other than something of God's <coughs> kingdom, I'm suggesting to you that's why you're, you're lacking. You're not, you're not walking in the promises, and you're missing out on so much because you've allowed something else. And, and just you can get back, though. And he goes on to say here, you know, you know, the, he says the light of the body, Matthew 6, 22, I've taught on this several times, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. How many of you want to be filled with God? Amen. Amen. It comes by aligning your whole body with God's will, God's word, treasuring God. Treasuring his wisdom, his counsel, right? Walking in love. Looking at one another as treasures too. Taking those gifts, they're so valuable, and just don't hang on to them, but give them away, right? Wow. And if you don't do that, the implication is your, your darkness is going to come in, and uh, you, you're not going to be tabernacling like God's called you to. Could that happen to anybody? I'm telling you, that's a key. That's a key the Lord has showed me that. And it's so true. I'm telling you, all you got to do is come in alignment with the Word of God, the Holy Spirit's leading. You, the power of God will come, ignite your authority. You'll be infused with dunamis, miracle working power, and the kingdom will come. We see it happen all the time. Hallelujah. And so, could it be that we haven't awakened to the spiritual warfare that we are currently in? Maybe we've. Uh, We've been um, corrupted. Maybe the enemy has made inroads in our life. Consequently, you know, maybe there's reasons why we aren't tabernacling because there's strongholds that have been set up by the enemy to keep you out. They need to be pulled down. Oh, man, we're going to build into that this week. I realize that this treasure that we have in earthen vessels is too valuable to remain undiscovered. That is an adventure to discover, to find this gold, this treasure, more precious than gold and silver and rubies, is in you, Jesus, right? Wow. Paul said, 1 Timothy 4.14, Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which is given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. 1 Timothy 4.14, verse 15 says, Meditate upon these things. Does that tie, does that connect with what he said to Joshua over Joshua 1A? Sure Give thyself wholly unto them, to the gifts, that thy profiting may appear to all. How many want some of that? And I'm telling you, this is a big deal. So let me close with a word I believe the Lord gave me for the church. I believe this is a word. He said, if the church will arise into their rightful seated positions, in the days ahead, that could be just, you know, I mean, even though the nation of Israel, most of them didn't go in, some of them did, right? Because they arose up. They were, they were right in right standing with God. Uh, if the church will arise in the rightful senior position in the days ahead, if we will seek to understand and appropriate or employ the heavenly spiritual warfare strategies that we receive, from his throne of grace, he said that then the future will hold no fear for the church. No fear for you. How many believe that could be true? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, we're talking about warring with ends, you know, not after the flesh, but, you know, take care of the, what's going on on the inside. Everything on the outside will be taken care of because he's already won the war. And we're going to build on that and, and uh, really maybe get into tearing down some strongholds. 
and there's certain major strongholds that the enemy has made inroads into so many lives, and we're going to deal with them, some of them this week. Is that okay? We want to deal with some strongholds yes. so that we can be free to move forward. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Gina, would you come and just close us out here? I'm stretching Gina's, yeah. yeah. Close us out and just pray for the people. You know, pray for the people. And Lord, just, you know, as she prays, Lord, we just yield our hearts, anything that we need to give to you. And, and we thank you for setting us in that place, restoring us where we're tabernacling with you because it's time to enter in. You yeah. feel the offerings too, if you would. Thank you, Father. We thank you for your word. And Father, we just ask that when we leave here today, God, that we won't forget your word to us today, Lord. Father, I pray that you would bury that word deep down in the hearts of everybody here. Lord, that as they go throughout this week, God, that they would just draw upon that seed that you have sown, Lord. Father, I pray, God, that as we leave this place, God, that we would be doers of your word, Lord. Father, that we would let our light shine bright, God. Lord, that when we walk, when we leave this place, that people will see Jesus, Lord. That they won't see us, God. We pray that, Lord, that you would just, just shine from us, Lord. Father, we pray that you would just break down any strongholds, Lord. God, I pray that you would bring breakthrough for people here that need breakthrough in their lives today, Father. Lord, I pray that you would just break away the chains, God, that are holding people back today. Father, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would just search our hearts, Lord, that you would search deep into our hearts. And where there's darkness, Lord, that you would just flood it with your light, Lord. Lord, we just lift you up, God, with praises, Lord. We lift you on high. And we thank you that you are a mighty God. And that you know everything that there is to know about us, Lord. And Father, I just lift the tithes and offerings to you, God. We just ask that you would bless them, that you would multiply them to your kingdom, God. Father, I pray that you would bless the givers today, Lord, that you would meet every need that's here, Lord. And Father, we just thank you, and we just give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.